from the combined crew of blindandroidusers.com and accessibleandroid.com, it's time for your favorite Android podcast. Kick back now and enjoy another fine episode from these fanboys and gals as they navigate Android from a blindness perspective. And now, here's your crew. Hello and welcome to episode 134 of the Blind Android Users Podcast. I'm Ed Green and I'm joined today by my co-hosts Warren Carr, Austin Pinto, Fee Dunn, Kareen Kuan, John Dyer and Sally Kunders. And we're coming to you on Saturday the 1st of July 2023. It's a busy one this week. In our Android Basics section, we continue our series on the Play Store and look at the Play Pass and some of the settings. We then have a double spotlight for you. So continuing from last week, from John Dyer's unboxing, he reviews the uh, Pixel tablet. Then John and Warren unbox the Pixel Fold. And we close with the next in our series on Jishuo from Kirin. First off, I'd like to wish our Canadian listeners happy Canada Day. Uh, my wife and daughter are out doing uh, Kanucky things on, on, on Canada Day. So I uh, hope you're all having fun there. So, Austin, it's a sad day in Washington State and Virginia this week, wasn't it? Yeah, first of all, Warren got his pixel fold and then he tried to unfold and close it back and the fold broke into two halves. And poor John got a pixel fold as well. Never mind. Um, yeah, and his phone board broke into two halves. Yeah, exactly. Well, that may or may not have happened, but it's a, it's a sad day. How are you, Austin, anyway? He sounds like you've uh, got folks around this weekend, have you? Yeah, I've got folks around because it's raining heavily in Mumbai. And the weather is getting very nice and pleasant. So all the beer teams are gone and back in the fridge. And the glasses of Rama come out. Nice. I like the sound of that. Warren, how are you? Have you got buyer's remorse yet? I could never be happier. I'm liking my Pixel Fold. And frankly, it's the best you know, hardware Google ever produced. You've got to feel this baby to know what I'm talking about. Uh, knuckleheads out there that don't know how this thing feels like. We'll say all sorts of stuff. And by the way, <laughs> John's fold and my fold didn't break apart. Uh, but thanks anyway, Austin, for uh, jabbing a bad jab at my pixel fold, you knucklehead. I'm doing well, Ed. <laughs> now, that reminds me, Warren. Did, did you hear about the time that uh, Bonnie Tyler um, made a GPS system? <laughs> no, I didn't. It kept telling you to turn around, and every now and then it fell apart. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. But, yeah, our weather is kind of getting up hotter. You know, um, I think we're going to be 90 degrees today. Yesterday was actually maybe a little bit hotter. So, basically, we're cooling down uh, <laughs> 90 degrees, and it's a dry heat. 90 degrees is hot. Yeah. Ifona, how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm not bad. Um, we had some very, very, very hot weather here. Uh, particularly hot on uh, Sunday, wasn't it, Ed? In London, I think that was crazily hot. Now it's it cooler and lovely breezes, and it was just right for. Uh, I I had a birthday on Monday, and uh, my mum and dad came over on Tuesday, and we went on a a lovely trip along the River Thames after having some. I had some presents and birthday cake. Um, and I also decided to treat myself to a new phone. So I've now got a Samsung Galaxy S22, not the very latest, but still quite a newish one because uh, the late, very latest ones had the very latest price tags and I couldn't really justify that. And I'm loving the S22. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely phone to use, really nice um, battery life and everything. I'm very pleased with it. And I finally worked out how to link it to my other phone with WhatsApp on it. So I've got the same WhatsApp account on two phones and that makes me very, very happy. So yeah, it's uh it's it's been a good week. That sounds good. Okay. Kareen, how are the Khdood? Hello, Hudud are good, and I'm glad that I'm here after three weeks of absence. And um, I want to wish our listeners who celebrate Al-Athaid, 
Uh, happy Adha. Yeah, actually, it uh, it had passed uh, since uh, Wednesday. Wednesday was the first day of the Eid, but it's uh, late. I want to congratulate them, even if it's late. Absolutely. Uh, congratulations to everyone celebrating that. And belated uh, 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 Bappy Hearth Day to iPhone as well. So uh, Thank for, you. For Monday. Uh, many well, happy rappy birthday, young lady. Yeah, for the next for the next uh, year, I am the answer to life, the universe, and everything. If you've read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you'll know the reference. If you haven't, uh, I'm forty two. Excellent. And John Boy, how are you? I'm good. I will not be forty two until August, so oh. I'm a little bit younger in that regard. <laughs> Three of us will be forty two at the same time, which is quite funny. Yeah, that is. Um, but yeah, it's been a good week. Uh, busy. Apart from yeah. the fold arriving, presumably that that. Uh, no, that, that was great. On the week, no, it? that was great. Like Warren, I'm loving it. It's I'm actually liking it a lot more than I thought I would. Oh, nice that's fun. good. That's good. And Sally, how are the Yanak? How is your life in Samsung City? Well, the city is really warm these days. It's like we've seen 29 degrees today. And um, I'm super happy because I'll be 42 in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. And wishing uh, Show off. the happy birthday. And congrats for you guys, for your pixels. And everyone, happy Eid, or who, who is celebrated, of course. And are the streets of uh, Samsung's Fair City still paved with one terabyte S23 Ultras? Are they, uh... Yeah, yeah, they still do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. This is the announcement segment of Blind Android Users Podcast. Stay tuned to hear important information regarding the podcast, surveys, and the latest news. Now we turn to our announcement section. Austin, what have you got for us? So this week there are no announcements, but I think we need to also wish the US listeners a happy Independence Day because the next uh, podcast will be after that. So Ed, do you want to wish them? No, we don't, do we? Because they're not in the Commonwealth. They ought not to have defected and yeah, it's basically happy that. tax not... evasion day. Yeah, they're not in the Commonwealth. No, and it's happy. It's basically tax evasion, isn't it? And uh, I don't think they've. I don't think they've really shown any responsibility to uh, uh, self determination anyway. So uh, I'm surprised you <laughs> still allowed them. Yeah, to be they are not. Yeah. No. You should. You should go and they, capture they still them. speak English, though. A lot of them. Well, sort of. The whole point is that the British got kicked out, and I think that's all that matters. And the British are still soured about it. Uh, guys, take a, bre I, uh, a breather. I'm and, not. Uh, go I don't get care. stuck on some egg or something. <laughs> 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 it's a beer wow. drinking day. They've done. They've done very well, haven't they? Bless them. But if you can capture them, and if you require help from us, we can give our help. Oh, Excellent. Gosh. Oh gosh, yeah. Austin. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Gandhi would be so ashamed of you. This is Android Basics, in which we bring you up to date on the things that you should know to use your Android phone. Now we turn to the Android Basics section, and Warren is going to pick up the next episode in our Play Store series and show us the Play Pass and start to go through those settings in the Settings category. As we continue our journey through the Play Store, Today we'll be looking at a couple items. We'll be looking at the Play Pass, what it does and what it cannot do. We'll also take a look at one of the items from within the Play settings. I am on my home screen and will now tap on the Play icon and get started. Play Store. Let's go ahead and tap. Play Store. Google tap. I am on the Play Store now and what we need to do next is to tap on the username on the top right hand corner of our phone. And so I'm gonna put my finger near the top right corner and tap on my username. Signed in as Warren Carr, account and set. I tap here and next we wanna go ahead and tap on Play Pass. 
I will now tap on the play pass, which is the seventh item that's going toward the bottom. Play pass, seven of seven. Here is play pass. I'll tap to activate. Play store, more fun, less interruption, enlist. I am now on the play pass page. And here you could choose to subscribe. I think it's like uh, $4.99 a month. Or if you do an annual thing, I think sometimes they have a sale. And I think that may be the case for now. And you can get it for less than half the price somewhere in there. Let's take a look and see what we have. For just $4.99 per month. Okay, so $4.99 uh, a month. No ads. Yes, no ads. Basically, that's what they are telling no us. No in-app purchases. No in-app purchases. In other words, if you find an app that is participating in the Play Pass program, whether the app is $100 or $0.99 cents or $0.10, cents, you will get that added to your account for free because you're already paying monthly. Cancel anytime. And you can cancel at any time. And get started button. Here is get started. But before we get started, I want to look at the items below here before we get started. You can save 50% with a yearly subscription for $29.99 per year. And so here they're telling us that if you decide to do an annual subscription, it's going to be $29.99, basically $30 as to the $5 a month. Of course, when you multiply that $5 a month by 12 months, you're looking at a total of $60. So if you do the annual, you'll be saving half that price. Let's look at some of the information. Frequently asked questions. So here is the FAQs. What is included on Play Pass? Collapse button. So this uh, collapse, if I tap here, for example, expand button, here's what we got. As a subscriber, you will get access to an expansive catalog of 1000 plus games and apps with new additions every month. Games and apps in Play Pass will have no ads and no additional in-app purchases. That's one of the answers for the FAQs. How can I browse the catalog as a subscriber? Expand button. And you could tap on this to expand it and things like that. If I tap here. Collapse button. Check out the Play Pass tab in the Play Store app or look for games and apps marked with a Play Pass badge throughout the Play Store. So in other words, there will be a Play Pass tab in your Play Store app. And when you tap on that, you could see some of the apps or games that are available for the Play Pass program, or if you're searching for an app and if it qualifies for the Play Pass um, program, it will be associated. It will let you know that this app is actually uh, participating in the Play Pass. And so if you get it, you're not going to be paying anything. And what happens to games and apps I already have? Expand button. And if we like, we could expand that. Collapse Let's take a button. look. For any games and apps that are included in the Play Pass catalog, ads will be removed and in-app purchases will be unlocked. That's what that is. How are in-app purchases unlocked with Play Pass? Expand button. And I'm not going to go through all of this. How does family this. sharing work on Play Pass? Expand button. Here's a family sharing. I think Collapse this one button. is important to look at. Here's what it talks about family sharing. With family library. Family managers can share access to Play Pass with up to five family members at no charge. Family members will need to activate Play Pass on their account. Learn more. So, in other words, you who is the managing person of the Play Pass, you could enable that. And then, if a family member is on your plan and they want to participate, they will need to activate the Play Pass on their device. Let's keep going. Share the fun. Share the fun. Family managers can share access to Google Play Pass with up to five other family members so everyone can enjoy on their own devices. Thank you. Learn more button. And you can learn more and that's what that is. So if you want, you could take advantage of it by tapping on that Get Started or you could tap on that place that talks about the 50% off and then go get yourself a Play Pass for 
$29.99. That is $30. I think I'm going to get that just for giggles. That also gives you play points when you do that because it will uh, give you a lot of uh, play points. Let's How go in I there so it? you see what I'm talking about. Let me scroll back up here. You can save 50% with a Google Play Store. So I Zero. tap there. Google Play. And here... Play Pass will automatically be shared with your family members. Okay. Earn three points for one dollar on your first payment. So if I subscribe today, each dollar is going to give me three points. So if I have thirty dollars, so thirty times three, I'm looking at a total of uh, ninety uh, points. Is that what that is? I think so. Ends June thirtieth, twenty twenty-three. So at my end, it ends today. June 30th, 2023. You'll be charged $29.99 plus tax automatically every year until you cancel. Your price may change as described in the Google Play Terms of Service. Learn how to cancel. And in other words, if you decide to cancel after you've subscribed, you can cancel at any time so that the uh, payment doesn't recur uh, because you already signed up. So. It's totally up to you. I think I'm going to sign up later on when I'm done with this. Play Store. You now, I went back now, and let's go back to the second item that we want to look at today, and that would be from within the Play Settings. So I'll go back again. Signed in as Warren Carr. Account and Settings. All right, so let's go ahead and tap on this account name and go tap on the Settings. And then look at the first item that we want to look at from the settings. Account and settings. Now I'll navigate to the settings toward the very bottom and tap on it. Now below Play Pass we have settings, one of two settings in list, two and items. that's the item we want to look at. So I'll tap here. Play Store. Navigate up. Button. And the first thing we want to look at here, there are several items here, but today though, we will be looking at the first item and that will be the general. General, account preferences, notifications, click to expand the general settings section in list. Let's tap here and see what we find in the general area. Click to collapse the general settings section. I have expanded the general settings area, and here are the items that we find upon activating the general. Account and device preferences, account, country, and history. We got account, history, and country, and all of that. Notifications, manage notification settings. We got notifications. Theme, system default. We have themes and system defaults. Google Play Instant. Use apps and games without installation. We come across the Google Play Instant. Google Play Store feedback, control surveys and responses. And that's the last item from the category of the general. Let's go back at the top though and start looking at some of these items. Let's start with the preferences. Account and device preferences, account, country and history. Tab. Account and device preferences. Account and device preferences, out of list. In here, we have the following items. I missed up to open up some things and look at it, but basically I'm just going through so you know they are here and you can look at those things on your own. Emails from Google Play, one of 11, in list, 11 items. We have a header that says emails from Google Play. In other words, if you want to be able to receive email messages from Google Play regarding some things that they have going, you can turn this feature off because below that we have Receive emails with news and offers from Google Play. So in other words, if you want to receive email about offers and news and things like that, there's an on-off toggle to the right of that. Receive emails with news and offers from Google Play. Switch off. And you can turn it on if you want it to. And below that, is your email address. If you tap on that, if you wanted to receive the email messages about these promos and offers, 
with a different email address, you could go edit that and put in the email address that you would like to receive those offers and promos at. And below that, we hear the address where you get information about most of the Google products you use with this account. There more you go. options. There are more options there. Country and profiles, two of 11. Next, we have country and profile. So your country, and you could change your country if you travel to another country, for example. United States. Here below there, it says United States. So if I were to travel to, say, to the UK or some other place like that, I could change my country to the UK so that I have access to the Play Store there. Next. You should change your Play Country only when you move to a new country. Learn more. 4 of 11. So you could do that if you move to another country, like I said. Next. You may see content relevant to the general area you are in, based on your IP address. Learn more. Next. 5 of 11. History. 6 of 11. And in here is our history, and below that... Clear device search history. Remove searches you have performed from this device. 7 of 11. You could tab there to go clear all of your history that you've made searches from. Clear wish list. Tap to clear everything out of your wish list. 8 of 11. If you tap here, if you want to clear every wish list or apps that you have on your wish list, you simply tap here and you're going to find where it says clear. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Clear wish list. This will clear everything from your play wish list out of list. Upon tapping of that, I'm being told it's going to clear everything out from within my wish list. And frankly, I don't want to do that. And so we have either cancel or OK. Yeah, In the middle, we got cancel button. Cancel and to the right of it. Clear button. Is the clear button. Now I'm going to tap on cancel. Cancel button. I got too much stuff in my play wish list to, uh, to clear all of that out in one shot. Play Store. Clear wish list. Tap to clear everything out of your... All right. Next, moving on, we come across... Leave beta programs. Tap to leave all beta programs you've joined. 9 of 11. So in other words, if you want to leave every single beta program that you have joined, then you could tap here and, of course, go tap on that clear. Instead of, you know, clearing or opting out of betas one by one, you feel like I don't want to be part of any betas anymore, then you can simply tap on here and simply tap on that clear. And every single beta you participated in will be gone with the wind. Next, let's move on. Unregister for upcoming events. Tap to unregister for all upcoming events. 10 of 11. So if you've registered for some upcoming events and you want to go unregister, feel free to tap here and go tap on unregister. Next. Unregister for app and game pre-registration. Tap to unregister for all pre-registration notifications. 11 of 11. Sometimes there are either apps or games that open up for pre-registration early access and you could opt into those things and then if you are waiting for those things and later on you say hey I don't want to be part of this you can tap here and go and register for those things that's what we have in here and that's the last item I'll now go back to the previous screen general account preferences notifications click to collapse the general settings section in list and moving on, so we're going to move away from... Account and device preferences, account, country, and history. The next item we have is... Notifications. Manage notification settings. Tap. Notification settings. For this device only, one of eight. In list, eight items. And here are the items we find in here. Account. Notify about upcoming charges or problems with payment methods, two of eight. Next switch on and updates available notify when updates are available for apps three of eight so if you want to be notified when updates are available and of course to the right of that is an on off switch switch on next updates completed notify when an app is finished updating four of eight and if you want to activate that there's that on off switch to the right of that switch off and there's an off because by default it's off. And if you want it to be on, 
you tap on that. I don't care about turning that on. For your account. Next, we have something for your account. And below that we have. Pre-registration. Notify when you can pre-register for new games we think you'll like. Seven of eight. And you could turn that on. Switch on. And minus on. Next. Deals and promotions. Notify when there are offers we think you'll like. Eight of eight. And of course, there's an on off. Switch on. That's the last one. Now let's go back. General. Account preferences. Notifications. Click to collapse the general settings section in list. So we're back to that general settings and we have that uh, notification. Moving away from notification, we got theme, system default. We have themes. Moving on. Google Play Instant. Use apps and games without installation. And you can go in there and choose to use those or not. Google Play Store feedback, control surveys and responses. And in here we have something about Google feedback, you know, and surveys and all that. That's the last item in the general. Let's go in here though and see what it contains. Google Play Store feedback, apps and offers, one of six, in list, six items. So the first thing we heard is apps and offers, one of six. Moving my finger down. Answer surveys about apps and offers. Receive occasional surveys about how well you like apps and offers you see on play. Two of six. And to the right of that. Switch. On. Is an on off toggle. Next. Manage survey responses. See and remove your survey responses about apps and offers. Three of six. You could tap on that and go manage that. Play store app. Four of six. Next we have the play store apps. Answer surveys about play store. Receive occasional surveys about how well Play Store meets your needs and interests. Five of six. And to the right of that. Switch on. It's a switch off slash on. Remove survey responses. Permanently remove your survey responses about Play Store. Six of six. And that's the last item. You could tap in here to go remove all the uh, responses you've given here on the Play Store. And that's the last item in this category. I will now hand it back to the podcast crew and let's deliberate on some of these things. You're listening to the Blind Android Users Podcast. Thank you, Warren. I, I've got to say, I don't, I don't use Play Pass. I've, I've sort of been semi-interested in it, but I slightly resent the fact that everything in life appears to be becoming a subscription these days. You can't just buy something anymore. You have to sign up to it. Anyone else a Play Pass user? Never used well, it. Well, Play Pass is not available in my place, so. So Play Pass is a new thing in India, and always I thought that there's a trial trial, and I wanted to search for it, but I could not search for it. You don't, don't have to search it. for it. It will just be there if it's available in your country. I mean, I've got the apps I need, so I don't really see the point of Play Pass. I mean, it's quite good. It, you know, if you, if you want to download a lot of included paid apps, then, you know. It's yeah, I guess benefit. then, but I, I tend not to download many apps like that. I tend yeah. to just pay for an app. And... Yeah, so or... I think that the whole thing, though, is that People who are gamers are the ones that really benefit from this because there are not so many apps on there, to be honest. Um, now and then you find regular apps because it all depends on the developer. You know, the developer wants to participate in the Play Pass program or not. And uh, But a lot of gamers or game developers, you know, participate. So if, you know, if you're a gamer, you know, this is a heaven for you because then you don't have to be paying for these things. I just went ahead anyway and purchased it because um, for one year, and like I said, frankly, I don't want to be paying five bucks a month for something like that. So I got the uh, annual subscription for thirty dollars, and by this time next year, I'll just cancel. John, do you have it? I do not currently have it. I the only time I've ever had it is when i've had a free trial of it i've somehow managed to get like multiple free trials in the past but um yeah i take it out and then i event i go right in there and cancel it so it won't renew because i know i'm gonna forget but so do you ever like, actually use it for anything no not really 
like Warren said, there's very few apps in there. I think like a couple of apps I got the pro version of like one might've been an audio recorder, maybe high MP3 or something along those, something similar to that. If it wasn't that one where I could get the pro version, but the pro version is probably only less than $5 itself. So yeah, it wasn't really, much. Yeah. So if you're not pl playing games and you're not buying like in app purchases, which let's be honest, those mostly are only for games, then you probably won't get too much of a benefit out of it. There are apps in there, but probably nothing I would use too often. I think it's good for gamers, though. I, I think, but yeah, I think it's, if you're not a gamer, like you say, quite niche sort of thing, isn't it? It's not, because most apps don't cost that much anyway, just to buy once. Yeah, but the whole idea, though, is not that whether the apps cost 10 cents or $100. The idea is that you can get a lot of apps that participate and they keep adding on apps. So let's make that clear. It's not like there are not apps in there. Um, so if you look like last year and you look this year, you see that there are more apps on there. So it's a good thing. But like I said, if one is going to participate, it's best to just get the annual rather than the monthly thing, because you're paying five bucks a month, that's a lot uh, to ask for. Uh, you might as well just buy the uh, the app out that you're after mm -hmm. or whatever. But if there are several apps that you're after, then it's worth it. But rather, I'll just get the annual uh, $30 and call it good. And then if you think you don't need it anymore, cancel it before your anniversary comes up. Presumably, though, there are loads of apps with in-app purchases that aren't part of Play Pass. So I think you'd have to check do the apps you actually want, are they part of it before you stop paying money? That's what I would do anyway. The other thing that I like about the uh, settings though, under that general and all of that, is the, uh, the ability to opt out of betas or opt out or clear out your history or, uh, opt out of you know pre-registrations and things like that or you can even clear your whole uh, wish list if you want it to and that's found in that uh general settings you know notifications and all of that i really like the way they arranged it so if you are in a beta or several betas and you don't want to go one by one to opt out of those you just one click and you're out you know what they should add though they should, should add they an op they should ha add an opt in session so if there are betas for apps on your account you should be able to opt into them there as well i see what you mean like if you have apps installed and you on can your, say yeah, hey, your library. you know hey yeah. if there are betas for this app i want to opt, opt in, in for all of them yeah. i think that makes sense they should have that as well that would make sense that yeah really or at good. least show you a list of all the ones that you have that have betas and then you could Choose the ones you want to opt into. Yeah, or opt yeah. into all. Yeah. You know, yeah, sometimes yeah. knuckleheads like us come up with good ideas that the big wigs uh, don't have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take a step back and look at the logic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that would really make sense. A lot That'd of be amazing, times, isn't it? You know, um, these guys don't think of some things. And, you know, if I have apps, and they'll say, hey, you know, all of these apps that you have or XYZs of the apps that you have have betas you want to opt in. And I could say, yeah, opt in or just select the ones that I want. That would The other thing sense. they should do is uh, that they should move the opt in button on the Play Store. So it's buried. Like you might never see it. They should put it up with uninstall and open. Exactly. Near the top, not toward yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Like, it, like you might never see it. You literally wouldn't know. Yeah. You have to go toward the bottom to find that. Yeah, they should move it up and give you an opt-in button. There, there is an app. I love to do the demo during the app Bonanza. It shows you all the betas of all the apps that are installed on your device, including Google Apps. So I need to do the app uh, demo during the app Bonanza. Are you talking about Beta Maniac? I, I have that. Yeah, yeah, Beta Maniac, yes. Yeah. I forgot the name of the app. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hum Humphrey Bogart did that in a film once. He said... Of all the betas, of all the apps on all your phone, and you had to opt into mine. 
Yeah. There's something That's from that... Casablanca, folks. Slightly oh. reworked. <laughs> I, I don't watch movies, so I have no clue. Uh, there's something about Beta Maniac that I don't like. I don't remember what it was, but it's like it doesn't give you like information about something. I, I don't remember what it is about. I still have it. And, um, you know, it's a way to, you know, get uh, betas if you want to be opting in for betas. There's something that Google forgot to give us a way to opt into all the ones that I have installed. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been good for me um, because that WhatsApp, you know, being able to be on more than one phone for the same account, that was available before as a beta for ages. Um, it would have been nice if I could have done it, you know, app by app. Actually, I only want the WhatsApp beta. I don't want any others because I haven't got time for unstable apps. You know, I could just have opted into that. That would have been nice. This is the Spotlight segment. Stay tuned for premium interviews, device unboxing and more. Now we move on to our spotlight section, and it's a it's a double bill this week, in my view, an unfortunate double bill, but others may disagree. First off, John is going to pick up where he left off last week, and he's going to review the Pixel tablet. Hi, John here, and today I'm going to be doing a demonstration and review of the Pixel tablet. I'm going to demonstrate it for you first in hub mode. Then I'm going to follow that with a demonstration of using it as a tablet. And then after that, I will wrap up with my final thoughts, what I liked, what I didn't like, that sort of thing. I just want to warn you going into this that if you are not using headphones to listen to this and you have Google devices nearby listening, you might want to mute them because I'm going to be saying, okay, G a lot in this demonstration. All right, let's get right into it. Here's a little demonstration of the Pixel tablet in hub mode. So I have it I have it on the dock now. And I have talkback enabled, so I'm just going to swipe through so we can see what's here. Weather clock, web view. Weather clock, web view. That's the main window, I guess. Has name, Pixel tablet, Windows system UI. Cast name, that's if you want to cast to this device, that's what you would look for. And while, while we're on that subject, you can cast to this device as if it's a Chromecast. You can do a full screen cast or cast from apps, and it will continue to play even after you've taken it off the dock. That's one question I had. Priority mode on image. Priority mode on. Home button. Home. I'm going to go in here. These are the home controls. Home. List. In progress. Proper home. Cameras. Four cameras. Lighting. 23 lights. Wi-Fi. Three devices. Climate. Five devices. Favorites label. Indoor 73. Thermostat. Thermostat. So I'm going to go back Favorites to label. the lights. Climate. Five. Wi-Fi. Three devices. Lighting. 23 lights. Close screen. Lighting. Close screen, button, open an app, button, selected, all on, button, all off, button, collapsed, off, bedroom, light group. Let's just turn all, all off. off, button, all off, selected. So now it's dark in here. <laughs> I'm in my kitchen. Collapsed, off, bedroom, expand, bedroom, button, collapsed, off, kitchen, light group. I'm going to turn this back on. On 100%. So now the kitchen lights are back on. on. 100%. I'm going to back out of here. Home. Lighting. 23 lights. So that's just a quick preview of the home control section. As you can see, TalkBack works great with it. It's a much be better experience than Chromevox on a standard home hub display. Device locked. Lock screen. John. Weather. Weather. So now I'm back to the lock screen. Weather clock. Web view. Cast name. Pixel tablet. With priority mode on. Image. Home. Button. 908. Here's the time. 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Weather. So one thing I want to mention is wherever you leave talk, if you're going to leave talkback turned on, 
wherever you leave the focus, it's going to constantly update. So if you leave it here on the time, every minute you're going to hear Talkback announce the time. So you might <laughs> see perfect example there. So you might not want to leave the focus there. 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Same with the weather, unless you're really obsessed with the weather and want to know every time it changes by one degree, you know, don't, don't put the focus there. So keep that in mind if you're going to leave TalkBack on. And TalkBack does, every once in a while, say things when, you, um, when you're not wanting it to. So for the most part, it does... It doesn't talk while you're talking to it, which is a good thing. It, that would be bad if when you're using Google Assistant, if it talked. But that's not a problem, fortunately. But every once in a while, you'll hear a random notification or something, and um, it won't read the contents of your notification, but it'll say something like Gmail, three notifications. So little annoyances like that. And here, I'll give you one example. I'm going to go into the living room. Okay, Google, what time is it? It's 9, 10 a.m. So I wasn't even talking to the Pixel tablet here in the kitchen. But, Weather. Weather clock. What you? But as you could see, it did wake it up. And because it woke it up, it just randomly talked. So talk back. I don't know. You might be better off just turning it off. Um, you can do it with the regular shortcut, or um, you can just say, okay, Google, turn off TalkBack. Turning TalkBack off. TalkBack off. Okay, Google, turn on TalkBack. Turning TalkBack on. TalkBack on. All right, so. Weather, weather. Now I'm going to just do a couple of demonstrations of using it with voice commands because it's been pretty inconsistent. So, for example, if I want to listen to something on uh, Pandora, it'll work. Okay, Google, play Mayday Parade on Pandora. Playing on Pandora. Okay, Google, stop. So, Lock screen. John. as you can see, that works perfectly fine. But if I want to do something like, okay, Google, play the latest episode of Blind Android Users Podcast. Got it. But first, you'll have to unlock your device. So it's making me come over to the display, unlock the device, and when I do, unlocked. device unlocked. Play blind Android users podcast. It just makes me say the command a second. Sure. Time. Playing the latest episode of Blind Android Users Podcast. Blind Android Users Podcast episode one hundred thirty three. Play Store Part Six, the library, and a most awaited unboxing on the screen off. Ringer silent. So I just turned off the screen, so it probably won't play it. But had I left it on, it would have started playing it, and then even after turning off the screen, it would have kept playing it. But it's annoying to have to unlock it. So, for example, okay, Google, play Stranger Things on Netflix. All right, but first you'll have to unlock your device. So see, I can't play anything on Netflix. But, okay, Google, play Cars on Disney Plus. Here's Cars on Disney Plus. He breaks to a stop in the grass. Okay, Google, stop. McQueen speeds off. So, as you can see, it's... Lock screen, John. Very hit and miss. And a couple of things that you really feel like it should definitely do, it doesn't do. Like, um, for example, weather, weather. Okay, Google, tell me the news. 
For that, you'll have to unlock your device first. <laughs> so then I have to unlock the device and then say again, tell me the news, and then it does. Even something like a simple routine, like just a built-in good night okay. routine okay. where I want to just have all the lights turn off, adjust the thermostat, run the vacuum, all the stuff that I do when I go to bed. I can't even say that to this device. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Good night. All right. But first, you'll have to unlock your device. <laughs> so, as you, so as you can see, very basic stuff, even Google's own routines that are built in, don't work with the screen lock. And hopefully this is something that will fix in the future. But In the lock. Weather. Weather. And as you can see, it just talks randomly. Uh, so it's not the best experience. It's something that might be improved in the future. I'm hoping it's improved in the future because it's mostly, well, it's all software related as far as what I'm talking about now. So hopefully they can make it a more consistent experience. All right, so I'm just going to demonstrate the tablet use. So it basically behaves just as you would expect a Pixel device to behave. But I'm just going to touch on all the things that makes it different as far as tablet usage. So the first thing is um, fingerprint sensor. So it's on the power button and to unlock the device you just have to touch the button. You don't have to press it in. Just put your finger on it. 9.23 a.m. Fingerprint not recognized. And of course it doesn't recognize it the first Unlocked. time. Device unlocked. Home. Wednesday, June 28, 9.24 a.m. So that not recognized happens a lot because the power button is flush. So it's hard to find. You know where it is, but a lot of times when you first put your finger on it, you don't put it on it directly. So, it, I mean, you'll probably get used to that over time, but I haven't gotten used to it yet. So now I'm here on the home screen, and I'm just going to describe the differences. So you still have this home. search pixel, or I should say Google search box at the bottom that you can't get rid of. But when you're holding your tablet in landscape mode, it's at the bottom left. So to the left of what you would call the dock. So instead of being above the dock, it's to the left of the dock. So it takes up less space on your home screen, I guess. And to the right of it. Google app, but voice search button. Google lens button. Gmail is where I have my dock icons. Chrome, YouTube, photos. So, and if I turn it to portrait, uh, photos, portrait, then it goes back to the phone or, or the phone layout where the dock is at the bottom and above that is the Google search bar. So landscape. So another difference you'll notice when using the tablet compared to the phone is the recent screen. I'm going to bring that up. Recent apps. Home. Channels DVR. So like on the phone, the first page it brings up is just a full thumbnail, basically, of the current app you're in or the last app you're in. But when you swipe two fingers Google. to the right, there's small thumbnails. So there's about six small thumbnails to the left of the large thumbnail. Photos. So Facebook. You have messages. a lot of YouTube. different messages, channels, DV, Disney Plus apps to choose from without having to scroll. So it makes it a lot faster while you're swiping through channels, DV, Facebook messages because it doesn't have to scroll photos, YouTube every time you swipe selectable URL button, YouTube. So that's a difference. Um, also, when you're in this recent screen, you have you also have your dock at the bottom with your icons, which Chrome, home. which makes me want to mention. So they have this new taskbar, which I'm trying to figure out the use of. <laughs> I might be missing something. But as far as I can tell, it's no different than your dock, which you can get to from the home screen. And it's also at the bottom of the recent screen. So let's say you're in an app. 
Recent apps. Home. Taskbar hidden. Google. Search. So I'm in the Google app. So if you swipe up from the bottom just a little bit with two fingers. Taskbar shown. Apps list. Gmail. Chrome. It, YouTube. Photos. Messages. Facebook. It brings Home. up the Recent taskbar. Apps. YouTube has three notifications. So you have task voice search button. So it's hidden itself, but it brings up the taskbar and that's quick access to your doc uh, apps. And I, I guess one of the things you can do with it that you can't do with the doc or the recent screen is you can double tap and hold on an app and then drag it to either the left or the right side to start a split screen. But personally, I find it easier just to open the app I want, then go to the recent screen and choose split screen from there to start a split screen. But I guess that's just another way of doing it. And I think the dock is supposed to stay there. Let's see. Taskbar shown. Apps list. Gmail. Chrome. YouTube. Photos. Messages. Facebook. Excuse me. Taskbar. Home. Google. So, let's say I open photos, photos from the taskbar. Keep your memory safe. Keep your memories. Yeah, it doesn't. So the taskbar goes away. So I'm not sure if it stayed there. I guess I would get it, but it goes away when I use it. So I'm having a hard time understanding what it's for. Anyway, let's do, let me show you the keyboard. Turn on backup, but your photos and video. I go home. Home. Voice search button. Google app button. Search. Just going to go in the search box. Search apps. Showing split keyboard. Editing. Search apps. Web and more. Edit box. So. Showing English. US QWERTY. I'm a bad keyboard typer, but I'm just going to show you. V. R. Romeo. T. Tank T. V. V, V, Delta, S, V, D, S, S, T, T, T. So I typed test. So you can type this on this with the split keyboard. So your thumbs can reach all of the keys on the keyboard. And I think some keys are even on both sides. Let me see. J, J, H, H, G, Golf. Yeah, like for example, I can reach G with my right thumb G F F G golf or my left thumb G so the letter G is on both sides so you don't have to remember where the keyboard splits and I'll so I'll bring up the braille keyboard swipe up with three fingers for more options back but I'm not going to type on it because you have to use it in tabletop mode, and I'm holding it right now. So that's one thing that I found disappointing is because you're using a tablet, they assume you're going to want to use it in table. Three fingers for more options. They're assuming you want to use it in tabletop mode. So there's not even a setting within the Bra Braille keyboard settings to change it to adapt to how I hold the device or screen away mode. You have to type in tabletop mode, which I never type in, even with tablets. On my Samsung tablet, I could used for screen away mode, but on the Pixel tablet, for some reason, they're not letting me. So that's pretty disappointing. So another thing that makes the tablet a little different from the phone is that when you swipe down for your notifications. Quick settings and notification shade. 9.36 AM, Wednesday, June 28th. Do not disturb. Wi-Fi signal full. Battery 86% until 12.15 AM. <laughs> Wi-Fi signal full. OK, as you heard, it said Quick settings and notification shades. So you, three bars. you get both at the same time. The quick settings are on the left and your notifications are on the right. And so you don't have to swipe down twice to get to your quick setting, your full quick settings panel with the brightness setting and all that. Now, if I turn it to portrait, portrait. notification shade, 9.37 AM, Wednesday, June 20. It still has both, but they're actually, no, it's like the phone. Quick so. Settings. I just get some quick settings and 938. So you only get that tablet UI when it's landscape. in landscape. Quick and notification shade. Home. Wednesday, June 28th. And I'll just mention, but I think this is obvious. 
A lot of the apps, especially Google's own apps, are formatted differently when you're holding it in landscape. Actually, when you're holding it either way, because you're using a tablet, there's going to be something on the left and something on the right. So, for example, if you're in settings, the list of the different setting groups will be on the left. And when you open one, it just appears on the right. So you don't have to go back to get to a different settings group if you want to. Same with messages, you know, your list of conversations are on the left and the actual conversation that's selected is on the right and stuff like that. So I think I've touched on all of the main differences when using the UI when it comes to tablet usage versus phone usage, but basically this thing is a pixel. So, you know, just about everything you like about your pixel, you're going to like about this and... <laughs> Whatever you don't like about your pixel, you probably won't like about this. All right, I'm back. So the first thing I wanted to touch on is the sound quality. Obviously, this thing is going to sound much better when it's docked than when it's not docked. I think the speakers on it are decent for a tablet. I don't really have any complaints. I think it would be perfectly fine for watching a movie or something, but if you're listening to mu music on here, you're definitely going to want to dock it. It sounds much better docked. And just as a comparison, so I don't have the Nest Hub Max, but I do have the regular Nest Hub, and this Pixel Tablet docked does sound better than the Nest Hub I have. You know, fuller sound, deeper bass, that sort of thing. I also have a Nest Audio, which is, as it is aptly named, just a speaker, <laughs> no display. And that sounds much better than the Pixel tablet. So that's just a $100 Google Home speaker. And that sounds much better than this tablet, but I expected that, you know, going in. This isn't going to be like blow you away with sound, but it is good sound for the size of it. And like I said, it is better than a standard Nest Hub. So first I'm going to talk about the things I do like about it. <laughs> um, I do love the build. I think it's, it feels very solid. It's lightweight. Now, it's made of metal, but it has a soft touch coating on it, so it doesn't feel metal, although it does feel sturdy. And I like the size of it. I like the shape of it. I like the fact that it has magnets in it, so you can attach it to your fridge. It has more... The interesting thing is it has more than just the magnets to attach it to the dock. It also has a magnet across the top, which makes me think... Google was either planning on releasing a stylus for it and canceled it, or they have plans to do so in the future because there's definitely a magnetic bar across the back of this near the top, and that is what helps it attach to the fridge if you wanted to take it in the kitchen while you're cooking or something and just stick it there. That is a perfectly good way to use it. Um, they also have... This seems like a small thing, but they've put rubber feet on the bottom. So, and they're not noticeable. You have to kind of feel around them to find them. So they don't stick out too far, but they're just enough feet to where you can put this thing. Like say you want to put it on your kitchen counter and just lean it against the wall. You can do that. It won't, the bottom of it won't slide out from under itself because it does have these little rubber feet on there. I don't want to <laughs> make it sound like there's... This is something giant and noticeable. You Most people probably would never even notice it, but when you do try to stand it up against something, it won't slip. So that's a good thing. Another thing I was pleasantly surprised with is it's pretty responsive. Um, in fact, I think it might be more responsive than my Pixel 7 Pro as far as talkback usage. Just swiping between items and how long it takes the... TTS engine to kick in, it's a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. Now, it's not, 
as fast as using a Samsung device, but for a Pixel device, it's pretty good. Now I'm going to get into the things I don't like. Of course, you knew this was coming. I'm going to start by saying... Now, this for most of our listeners, this probably won't matter, but the screen brightness isn't great. Um, I know a lot of, I won't say all, but a lot of low vision users prefer a brighter screen or an OLED screen, which this does not have. So if you're hoping for a bright screen, this doesn't have a bright screen. I mean, it's a decent screen, but it's not as bright as what you would find on like a flagship Samsung tablet. Another thing that really disappointed me, and I mentioned this in last week's podcast, is the fact that it doesn't have haptics. You know, I won't I won't really go into it because I already did, but it's something you definitely miss when it's not there. And I think as a blind user, it is something you depend on to a certain extent. So just know that if you were planning on getting this, that's not going to have haptics. And the final thing that's sort of... <laughs> it doesn't bother me, but it's something I have to mention. This will not play audio through the hub speakers while it's docked if you have something connected to the USB port. So if you want to connect like a USB keyboard or something along those lines, first of all, it won't connect while it's docked. You'll have to take it off the dock, connect the USB accessory, and then connect it to the dock. It'll continue to work once it's back on the dock, but the dock won't use the speakers. So if, for example, if you planned to use this to play media, off of a USB drive while connected to the dock and have it play that through the dock speakers, that's not something that you're going to be able to do in its current state. <laughs> I know I, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but hopefully this is something that can be fixed in the future with a software update, but who knows? So that's something I felt like I had to mention. Overall, I think... This is a good tablet. If you like the Pixel experience on a phone and you just want a tablet version of that, that's what you're going to get here. I mean, it is called the Pixel tablet, so that's what you're going to get. I don't think you'll find any surprises. Um, the only surprise for me was that it didn't have haptics. Um, other than that, it's a great experience. Do not get this for the hub experience, at least not in its current state. If you are like planning on letting this thing replace your home hub, you know, that's not what it's for. It's You're not going to be happy with that. As you've seen in my demonstrations, it's a very inconsistent experience. TalkBack kind of talks in some situations when you don't want it to. So you'd have to remember to turn TalkBack off. I think Maybe it'll get there someday, but as of right now, do not buy this expecting it to replace a home hub. If you don't have a home hub, this is definitely better than nothing, and I like the fact that you can use TalkBack on in-home hub mode, and that's a decent experience, and like I said, better than nothing, but it's not going to be as good as what you would get with just a regular home hub. So I hope this review has been helpful. Thank you for listening. Thank you, John. It still hasn't fallen off the charger there. You still haven't rocked it. Whatever that guy was having a problem with. No, that's not an issue. You sort of wonder with things like that, whether people sort of just go, if I do this, will it fall off? Oh, yes, look. You know, it's the kind of, what happens if I do this kind of mentality <laughs> yeah I, I could get it to fall off but i would never it wouldn't fall off while i was just trying to change the volume on it i i, I imagine mean, them there must be a height angle thing to this because 
depending on where it is, like dictates how hard you press down on it. So maybe maybe it's the height of the work surface, height of the user. Yeah. Obviously, the the high, the taller you are, and the the lower the work surface is, then obviously the, the more pressure you're putting through the volume button. Yeah, because um, you have to twist it to remove it from the stand. So, mm-hmm. like if you're not, if you're kind of pressing the volume button kind of towards you as you're pushing it down, then that would make it come off. So, are you keeping it, John? No. <laughs> that says more than a lot of everything else, really, doesn't it? I'm looking forward to the Galaxy Tab S9 coming out in a couple of months. I'll just say I, that I, much. I, I guess that John's defense is volumes. Volume buttons. Um, yeah, I, I guess John's no. defense to that would they would be that he never intended to keep it. He got it to review. No, no. Here's the thing. If it now, I know Warren's going to say they never promised this, but if it was an adequate replacement for a home hub, I would have kept it. Like if I could have just had this thing be a home hub all the time, and then if I wanted to just pick up a tablet and do something real quick, that would have been great. I would have loved that device, but that's not what this is. At least not in its current state. This is the Spotlight segment. Stay tuned for premium interviews, device unboxing, and more. And now we come to the second half of our Spotlight Double Bill, and it's uh, the Google Pixel Fold unboxing. And just as this phone comes in two halves, albeit separated by a hinge, we have two people to unbox it. Uh, who are admittedly unhinged because they bought it. Uh, and so for this unboxing, I'm going to pass you over to uh, Warren and John. Hello, everyone. This is a Blind Android Users podcast. And today we're doing an unboxing of the Pixel Fold. That you guys have a treat because John and I are unboxing the Pixel Fold. So we have a dual unboxing. I'm Warren Carr. And John, you are there in Virginia. You got yours today, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And for the record, I got mine first, so I'm the one who had to wait patiently <laughs> to be able that to open it true. at the same time. <laughs> that is true. Because you know what? I just got mine. I think mine got here about maybe 3.40 or 3.38, somewhere there, Pacific mm-hmm. time. And of course, you're on Eastern. So you got yours before mine. You will always get your stuff before mine does get yours. So. Yeah. <laughs> but we're delighted to be doing this dual unboxing of the Pixel Fold. Uh, John, I got the porcelain um, color. Which one did you get? Same. Oh, well. I should have. Yeah. I wanted the big one, uh, but this is only two fifty six. Yeah. That's all that the porcelain comes in. Uh, Google's been doing that drop. lately. They, the black one, for whatever reason, is the one you have to get if you want the larger storage. But, and I kind of wonder why that is. Though, is it because maybe the different colors wouldn't contain or have room for five twelve gig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that must be what it is. I've had so many black phones, it's not even funny. Yeah, well, it's, it, it gets boring, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, so my I Pixel would... 6 is, uh, what was it, a hazel? Yeah, I think I have the hazel yeah. color. Yeah. I normally go for whatever the color is. If they don't have a color, I get the white, but I rarely ever will just get the boring black, as I call it. Yeah, no, I, I think my Pixel 6 is also black because uh, mm-hmm. there wasn't the uh, 512 gig version in those other colors. So it's just kind of yeah. odd. So, and I, I always like the bigger storages. And so, anyway, so John, shall, shall we tear this thing open? Uh, yeah. I got that's let's much. Get to it. <laughs> so, right. uh, well, let's you tear yours, I tear All mine right. up. <laughs> I've pulled one of my tabs. I'm about to pull the other. Okay, mine is still in the, um, in the shipping. Oh, package. yours is in the shipping box. Okay, I'll yes. stop and wait for you. So, let me, I, let me grab a little. I got a little. Uh, what do you call the, you know, so a, clip, you, a clipper so here. So you have a uh, watch in there as well. Yeah, well, I didn't, box. I didn't get the watch because I didn't want the watch. I already have a watch. So I just what? decided I didn't want one, you know. <laughs> I, I probably should have gotten one and 
you know, yeah. given given yeah, it I'm as so, a I'm selling away. mine. I didn't get to watch. There we go. So, John, my box, my box is almost like square. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. almost square looking. Um, of course, I, I don't like yeah. describing boxes, but I know some people do. If you yeah, follow my much... unboxing, I don't. <laughs> yeah. but, hey, you haven't opened it yet. That's the important thing. But yeah, it is square and it's kind of thick. I know there's yeah. not a charger in here, so okay. I wonder if it comes folded because it is a kind of a thick box as well. Yeah. So I'm going to, you know. Yeah, let me know when you get your tabs pulled off. Yeah. So I get you. one tab off and. Ah, oh, these things are usually not that hard to pull up. There we go. So I think I got uh, both tabs off. And now we we need to take them out of the box, right? Yep. I'm taking my lid off now. All right. Me too. Okay. That's the top of my box. Wow. Okay, so it does come folded. The uh, Galaxy Z Fold phones come unfolded, but this one is folded in the box. Ah, interesting. Yeah, so I'm going to take it out. So there's, uh, there's a little tab that you pull on to lift up. To uh, lift, lift it up, yep. on, And it's surrounded. It's sitting there in a the little cardboard and all of that junk, maybe just the uh, uh should cable. we even look to see what else is in here? Uh, no, no. They are not putting anything in there, so I'm not even gonna bother. Uh, besides yeah. the cable, it's a bunch nothing. of stuff we can't read, and then yeah, there's a power cable, right? But no, that's brick. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, you know, it feels really nice in the hand. Um, it's gosh, heavy, isn't it? It is heavy. I, I have my you like your phones heavy though. Oh. I do like them babies, Harry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm kind of putting it against my uh, Pixel Seven Pro, and mm -hmm. so it comes up. I'm I'm, put, I'm standing them on my desk, They're just a little tad. The Pixel Seven is maybe about a quarter of an inch wider, and of course my Pixel Seven is in the case, so it's probably it's just the same size as the Pixel Seven to be honest, you know, with wise that is folded and then height wise, you know, it's not even up to the uh, camera bar or just up to my camera bar on my Pixel 7. That's the length wise. That's how tall it is. So definitely very pocketable um, yeah. device here. It's got a, so I'm taking my, uh, have you taken the plastic off yours yet or the paper? I haven't, and I'm, I'm taking I'm... mine off now. Okay, there we go. So, uh, so it is. You're right. It's a lot. Sh so the ratio on this reminds me of like, you remember when phones used to actually be 16 by 9 ratio? Before yes. we started making them taller and taller. Exactly. <laughs> That's what this kind of feels like. It's more of um, that shape of a phone, which is interesting. it really does feel like that. It truly. Of course, does. it's thicker. <laughs> it's a very yes, thick. It is. It is thicker, and you know what the um, so the, the physical description is though the uh, it has that camera bar that you know we've come to know on you know the Pixel six and seven series. Uh, however, it's kind of you know I think it's a little bit it sticks out sticks out more more. Yeah, and it you say? stops. And it stops before it gets to the edge. Yes. It doesn't wrap all around the, way. the edges yes. like the ones do on Pixel 7. No. Pixel so it 6. lifts a little yeah. bit to the to the left uh, and a little bit to the right. So it's kind of just a tad off from the right and a tad off from the left. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like quite a rectangle to me. I think the corners are a little rounded on it, which yeah, is probably they, a good look. They are rounded. Definitely. So... And then, of course, you know, we got the familiar 
uh, volumes, you know, a volume bar and the power, which is standard for, you know, Google uh, stuff, you know. And I, and I like that the, the um, because this is something that I didn't like about the Pixel tablet, I like that the power button where the fingerprint sensor is, is actually raised because on the tablet it's flush and it's hard to feel exactly where it is. So this is actually raised a little bit. It's not raised as much as the volume buttons, which I like, but it is raised, so you can find it easily. This feels like a book. You have the little thing that actually in the middle that feels like a spine of a book. This is absolutely beautiful. I mean, I have held and played with the uh, the uh, Galaxy Fold 4, but this feels uh, thinner for me than the Galaxy 4 uh uh, yeah it, it is yeah and i like i like the ratio of it better so this when it's open the lint, the screen is wider than it is taller which it's not like that on the fold so when you open the fold if you want like a landscape orientation you still have to turn it even after it's open but with this one it's already in landscape when you open it that's right i like everything is the same you got that you know uh, usb port there at the bottom and now about the sim card tray it is found on the outer layer that is the part that has the display so as you open it that other panel and then on the bottom there there are two holes you want the one that is more to the left not the one that is to the right if you put it in the one that is to the right you'll be punching some hole that is not the SIM card. Yeah, and just to be clear, this is while the screen is open and it's the left half of the phone. So on yeah. the left half of the phone, you're going, the SIM hole tray ejection part is the, the hole on the, the left. The first one on the left. Yeah, if with, you with have, it open if you, because if you have it closed, it'll be opposite. Yeah, if you close it, then it's the one on the right. Mm -hmm. As it's facing you, it's the one on the right. Don't do the one on the left if you have it closed. That's the SIM card arrangement. It feels like there's a speaker. So I still have mine open. It feels like there's a speaker on the uh, bottom on the right side, but on the top, it's on the left side of the phone. Exactly. So, yeah. So in other words, you know, the, the panel that has the camera has it on the right. So uh, shall we turn it on, John? So here's what I want us to do. I want to see if I can leave mine closed and be able to activate TalkBack while it's on. And you can open yours if you want. So we'll see okay. both sides to see uh, if we can activate it out of the box while it is closed and you know be able to use the outer um you know outer display to you know uh <laughs> all right sounds <laughs> good so <laughs> i have mine open now okay so i haven't opened mine yet so i'm just gonna uh, go ahead and let's go ahead and just turn them on right all right i'm holding so let's see i got the vibration i'm gonna turn mine on Oh, you know what? Should we try the two finger hold down for nostalgia's sake, or have they already gotten rid of that? No, that is still there. So you you can actually try the the two finger hold down. I think mine's still booting up because I haven't. I don't feel any vibration yeah, yet. I've, I've okay, felt, there it is. I feel a vibration on mine. And let's see what happens. All right, I'm gonna. I'll do the two finger hold and see what happens. Okay, then I'll do the two volume hold. Yep, it still works. That was a two finger hold. Yeah. Okay. Great. Welcome to talk back. <laughs> Welcome to talk back. Page one of five. Talk back. All right, I'm gonna Welcome back to out your of it. Pixel. Language English United States button. Double tap to activate. So now I'm going to hold down the two volumes on mine. And remember, mine is still folded. There we go. 
Talk back on. Held volume keys. I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit. Close button. Okay. Close button. Close tutorial. Stay in tutorial button. No, I do not Close want button. to. Welcome to your pixel. Language. English United States button. There we are. So I got mine turned on, John. We're both on the tutorial. Well, I mean, I have just closed my tutorial page and now on the setup process. Do we want to proceed with the setup or should we just uh, do uh, the setup later? Let's just proceed with the Let's, setup. Okay, well, what, you, you what go ahead and do? do the setup and I'll just turn mine off or close it or something. Okay, so I'm just going to skip a lot of the uh, whatever because this is just the unboxing. Get started. Yeah. So I'm not even going to put on Double an account to see what happens. Connect to mobile network. Heading. Skip. Button. So I. Connect to Wi-Fi. I'm just going to skip network, everything for now. List for, set up offline. Button. Up. Set up offline. Set up offline. Continue. Button. Eastern Daylight Time, GMT dash four hours, oh, brother. zero minutes. Okay. Date back, but next. Google services. Google more button. All right. Accept. Settings. Limited. This feels very to uh, responsive to me, though. Next button. Additional legal terms. I accept. Pin. Set a pin. Pin. Edit box. I want to hear what the, uh, you know, the typing sounds like it's not going to be any different. I'm just going to do 11, 11, 11, uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 6 times. 1, bullet, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Next, <laughs> re enter your pit. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Next, pins don't match. Whoops. 1, 4 bullet delete. 1, 1. One, one, one. Next. Settings. Keyboard hidden. Set up fingerprint unlock. Use your fingerprint to unlock your phone or verify it's you, like when you sign it. So I'm going to test the, uh, you know, the fingerprint reader, John. See how responsive. It should be just responsive as the other ones are because this is just a capacitive uh, fingerprint reader built into the power yeah More, it should be button. much easier Double than tap to activate. yeah More, ones button. in the screen i agree but touch the power button without pressing it the thing enrolling fingerprint zero enrolling fingerprint enrolling fingerprint eight percent change the position of your finger slightly each time to end setup place the center part of your finger on the sensor okay enrolling fingerprint 16 percent Make sure your finger covers the sensor. Enrolling fingerprint 20%. Enrolling fingerprint 24. Enrolling fingerprint 20. Enrolling fingerprint 30. Enrolling fingerprint 36%. Enrolling fingerprint. Enrolling you know, fingerprint 44%. I, I don't think that I'm the position of a fan of the, each time. the fingerprint on the uh, power. Place the tip to of be your honest. finger. Enrolling fingerprint 52%. Enrolling fingerprint 50. Enrolling fingerprint 60%. Enrolling because fingerprint you're trying not to press the power button, Change you know. Change the position of your fingers. Place the left edge of your finger on the sensor. Okay. Change the position of your enrolling fingerprint 72%. Enrolling fingerprint 76%. Enrolling fingerprint 80%. Change the position of your fingers. Enrolling fingerprint 84%. Enrolling fingerprint 88%. Enrolling fingerprint 92%. Enrolling fingerprint 96%. Enrolling fingerprint 100%. Uh, I think I'm done. Next. Getting your device ready. Heading. Swipe to navigate. Heading. Skip. I'm going to skip because I don't device want tutorial. Unlocked. There we go. All set. And. Home. Wednesday, June 28th. Double tap to activate. There we are, John. Google uh, is turned on. Mine is set up. Your device from <laughs> Yours is set up uh, if you were going to put it in a cell phone store for people to look at. Exactly. <laughs> no account on there. No account on it. So, so I have I, a question for you. Yeah. Because um, I've seen people say that when it's open, they don't feel like it opens all the way flat. Do you feel like it opens all the way flat or not? It's 
So let me try and see what happens. Um, so for me, it it's not something I would have noticed, and I can't tell honestly. How but is it opening for you? It did, seems did like it's try... opening all the way. Yeah. Let but me... when I sit it down on the box, it can kind of rock a little bit. But it's nothing I would have ever noticed. It feels pretty flat to me. So let's see. 749, fingerprint not recognized. Screen Oops. off. Excuse me. I didn't mean to do 749 that. 749 p.m. So I'm opening Massive mine. Landscape. Lock screen. 749 p.m. Showing split keyboard. So I'm trying to rock it from side to side. Screen off. And you know, you can you can uh, kind of push it back a little bit. There we go. And I push it back some more, and mine now feels flat, you know, on yeah. the screen. And also, something I want to mention here, the little film on here, do not peel that uh, whatever that is there. For me, I'm looking at it, and, you know, it has like a, you can feel where the screen ends. You know, you have the edges mm -hmm. where you can see where the screen uh, ends there. So it's not, you know, you have like a bar that is not covered by the whatever. So the screen cover or whatever that is there, you know, ends in those, you know, corners. So I, I like the corners. They feel kind of, now I have mine fully open. It has, it feels more like a, they're rounded corners. They're not, you know, they're not sharp corners. Yeah. And I, I, I like the feel of it. But I think if I were to use this thing, I probably I'll be using mine most of the time with, with it, uh, you know, uh, folded. You know, I, I just, I'm yeah. not, I'm not a ta tablet kind of. So now I'm mm -hmm. going to. So it feels yeah, I just close very that. usable one-handed with it closed. Your finger covers the sensor. Yeah. I, I wonder once I get a case on it, though, if it's going to feel too thick. Because my unlocked. Samsung one Once felt too thick escape. once Double i put a case on it. Uh, this I, I don't think this is going to be like that this is absolutely uh beautiful and i'm really yeah, liking what i see it's th it's thin it's definitely thinner i mean it's a little thinner than yeah. the samsung phone but it makes it makes a big difference it really does so guys that will be the unboxing and we will be writing a, a review or we'll be recording a review. John, if you get to it before I do, you could just do a review. I could also do a review or, you know, whatever. We could uh, collaborate on this review and see what we come up with, you know, depending on our experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys for listening to this audio unboxing of the Pixel Fold. It's been John and Warren. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Now, Warren and John, I know the full review is coming next week, but I wonder if either of you want to make any comments about the fold so far. If I were to make any comment, it would be what I already said. This is probably the best um, hardware that Google ever made. You've got to hold this thing in your hand to really know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful, well-crafted. Um, I'm not the fold kind of person, uh, but really, even I, you know, give kudos to this. And the only thing that I'm kind of worried about, I think this thing is, the price is a little too much, uh, most especially if this is, your first entry into the world of foldable. I think Google could have uh, staged this thing at say 1300 or at the most 1400, but 1800, I think that's a little too much and it's not a cheap device. So one has to be careful to know that, are you really gonna need it? And if you're not gonna be needing the folding part, the good part is that, you know, you, you can still use the outer layer and that's gonna be part of our review but as you can hear um us starting talk back john started his while it is unfolded and mine while it was folded and the ui is just absolutely beautiful i like it so 
look forward to the review next week. So I'm with Warren. I love the hardware. I think it's so much better than Samsung's version because I had the Galaxy Z Fold 4. I like the size and shape of this. It has better cameras. You know, it's not compromised in that area like the Z Fold line is. So I think it's a better phone, but I th if I end up getting rid of it, it's going to be because of the software. Like I'm just so used to having more customization with Samsung's phones than what Google allows you. You are a Samsung guy for sure. And, uh, you know, you know, this is stealing away from, you know, the review, but, you know, with the Samsung, you could have maybe like four or so different apps at once with the Google, you can only have two, you know, one on the one panel and one on the other. So, uh, I can see why you may want to stick with your Samsung device. The other thing I would say is that often the first company to do something like that, like the second company, in this case, Google, can learn from the first company's mistakes. So I just wonder, you know, if Google had done this first, would it have not have been as good? You know, I mean, we'll never know. But. Well, they did have a first one that they didn't bring. They actually, they said they scrapped it. Uh, but yeah, they actually had a foldable, I think even back in 2019 or whatever, that they were working on it. But then they scrapped it. So it was a good thing they scrapped it. <laughs> yeah, and I think you're exactly right, Fee. The main complaint with the Z Fold has been it's hard to use it while it's folded because the screen is so narrow and Google has addressed that exact issue. This is much wider. It's just as wide as a regular phone, what you're used to. And I, I'm, I mean, I, you, you don't know for sure, but I'd say, I'd say that's exactly why Google decided to go with this form factor because that's was the main complaint that people have with Samsung's phone. I'd love to know what the, um, what the first Google one was like, you know. Yeah, uh, one of these days maybe it will it will surface on eBay. You know, like um, the first phone, the sooner surface. I was trying to buy it, but it ran out. That thing was like two thousand bucks by the time. Yeah, it was. I, I don't want to <laughs> know that badly. <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, I want to comment on this whole thing. You are saying that it's a good phone. Yeah, it's showing that is that it is well built and all of that things, but well, and all of that stuff. But you are forgetting something which is very important. That you are dealing with a pixel. So, when Google does something, it's usually the thing that will end up with the problems that are so strange. To the point that you don't know how they come. They, they are coming from the clouds. So, you know, so for this reason, when you are discussing this fold, which is the first generation fold from Google, even if it's on the surface coming very good and you should, you should wait for about one month uh, at least to, to, to decide because you will be ending up with problems, maybe software glitches or stuff, and you will be ending up with hardware issues. This is because of the like the past of Google, which is not reassuring actually. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And Google has in the past always had issues with hardware, but they have also always had a good uh, warranty. So like, you don't have to worry about in the first year, if it breaks and it's not your fault, then they'll give you a replacement basically no questions asked. I mean, you'll be without a phone for a few days or actually they might even send it to you first. I don't know how it works, but you might have to be charged for the first one and then get your refund for the second one once they receive it, but they will replace your device if something's wrong with it. Uh, yeah. Like Karine, uh, uh, you, you're saying, you know, if the, if there are problems on the surface, I, I wonder if that's the Microsoft surface. It, the Microsoft Surface is better than Google, so you can't, oh, you can't I know. put this I know, joke yeah. here. You can't put this joke here because you, because <laughs> no surfaces are good. Problem. I like surfaces. I like surface tablets. Yeah, I'm not sure we yeah. want to yeah. advertise. It's slippery Microsoft surface, on. actually. 
Oh, no, you can advertise Microsoft, mm. it's fine. I, I was wondering if um, if a warranty was Warren's drink. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> He can't. He can't do a uh, podcast without warranty. No, <laughs> yeah. but what he does, he does though. Like, yeah. He, he oh, is, is it? Is it? Is it Warren? Is it a good warranty? That's the question. <laughs> or does it depend who makes it? Well, so let's put this out there. I have had to, uh, you know, going back to 2013 when I first got my S4, you know, the PGE device. I returned it to Google twice and the second one was my mistake but as ed said or was it john um no it was john they actually will send you the phone so that you are not without a phone while you send that in so you have to send that defective one back and if you don't then you'll get charged for it so uh no need to fear if there's anything wrong you can send it back but i do want to mention here that what we're saying here we're talking about how the hardware feels compared to the other hardware from Google that we have. I'm comparing it to my uh, 7 Pro, uh, Pixel 7 Pro, and this one, holding this one puts my Pixel 7 Pro to shame because unlike Pixel 7 that is sandwiched between, you know, the glass is one on the back and one in the front, this one, the back is like polished, uh, metal. It's just absolute beauty. You need to feel this thing in your hand before you know what we're talking about. Uh, it's just a beautiful craft. And now the G Show, or what Austin refers to as the Joshua Screen Reader, aka Commentary Screen Reader CSR. This is where some feature of this screen reader is demonstrated. And we conclude this week's episode with the next in our series of uh, commentary highlights. And it's over to Kareen. Hello, everyone. In this demonstration, I'm going to talk about the custom translation feature. Back in February, I think the developer had introduced the ability to modify translation strings according to users' liking. And uh, it was possible to import and export those modifications. And recently, the developer had added additional option, which is to share those um, modifications to GShow servers so other users can find them and download them easily. Let's see how all of this works by going to GShow settings from the main menu. Main menu, main GShow settings. GShow plus. Then advanced settings. Advanced settings. Advanced settings. Then language settings. Language settings. Language settings. And for the modifications to take effect, you have to use this option. Use custom translation checkbox checked. Use custom translation. Here you have a list that contains all of the translation strings. You will hear the original string and the translation, the default translation. And if the option is still not translated, it will be announced, of course, in Chinese. To modify a string, you double tap. So let's see here. Usage hint summary controls whether various use. Controls whether various useful hint. OK button. This is the summary related to the usage hint option. When you double tap, you will be um, focusing the text box containing the translation. The and you can uh, type. Granular editing mode button. You can modify this um, text and you can clear it, then type the text that you want. When you are done, just tap OK. And uh, to go back without doing anything, you can tap cancel. Also, you can do the back gesture or you can tap the back button. If you want to search for a specific text, 
you have to use the list browsing. I'll select this from the main menu. I think uh, the default gesture should be the swiping right, then down. And also, of course, you can assign another gesture to it if you want. Main, main list browsing. Language set. Gishiro plus list browsing. In list browsing, enter keyword text box. I'll tap on enter keyword and I can type. So I will type the word uh, sound. S S I fifth O O U U N two N D D two results. It is showing me uh, above the keyword the results, and it told me immediately the number of results. Use sound title sound feed. Use sound summary control. Scroll back button unavailable. Here it will search uh, among the visible content on the screen or the visible items and to scroll I use the scroll down to move forward and scroll up to move backward here you will hear them uh, scroll forward and scroll back because I modified them scroll back button unavailable scroll forward button plus list browsing. so it started scrolling and it showed me the result, so it stopped when it found a result. Use sound title, sound feedback. Use scroll back button. Scroll forward button. Dishiro plus list browsing. So I scrolled again, and it continued scrolling until it found another result. So it will continue scrolling until either reaching the end or finding a result. Okay, so let's go back now. Language settings. In the original strings, you will have hints that will tell you what are you dealing with. So when you hear title, you will be usually dealing with an option name or a setting. If you hear the command, you know that you are dealing with the list of functions that you can assign gesture to and uh, you can find the main menu as well as you can uh, put them in auto clicks preceded by the percent sign. Message means the messages that are spoken by Jisho, like browse by touch suspended, browse by touch resumed. Summary is the explanation of a certain option or feature. Voice CMD is the voice commands that Jisho uses in the Jisho voice assistant. Also, you have the default value for some uh, gestures and volume key presses, which you can modify here. Another thing that uh, you will find is the stuff related to the OK button, the cancel, the done, all of those things. Sometimes you will see something uh, containing percent %D or percent %S or both. Those are representing certain information that Yeshua will tell you, like a character or the battery level, the state of charging, the number of characters, and other things. The percent %S or percent %D is representing this information, and the text that you add before or after this will let you decide how to say this information and how to introduce it. You should uh, pay attention to something when you are modifying translation strings, which is related to commands. When you modify a command, you should modify the gesture if you have assigned it to a gesture in order for it to work. So you should go to the gesture scheme uh, that you are using and tap on the gesture, then function and set the new function with the new name to be as the action related to this gesture. Sometimes when you do a modification, it will not take effect until you force stop to show and relaunch it. When you are done with modifications, you tap on save. If you don't tap save and you move back, you should lose your changes. Items from 61 to 76, 1,559 items in total.
at the end you find the new strings so whenever something new is added it will be at the end uh, also um, there are the sound names related to the sound scheme and uh, by the way currently uh, there are still things in Chinese which are at the end as I said because they have been recently added to the strings and they are not in the default translation yet. When you tap on more options, more options button. you find share. the share. When you tap on this, you will be able to upload this uh, or your modifications to the Jishuo servers. Import. Also, you have the import to import the translation file if it was done by you before or if it was um, created by someone else. So scanning in progress free period. It does a scan and it will show you slash storage slash, slash emulated slash zero slash Jishuo slash resources slash having kid and twenty trillion two hundred and thirty back button. Slash storage slash emulated slash zero slash Jishuo slash resources slash and having kid strings dot JSON. Okay, so it is telling you the path and the um, name of the file. So if I double tap, okay, this is still in Chinese. It will, it's telling you that uh, you can import this file and you can either merge it or uh, overwrite the other translation. Uh, if you have one, and um, it is telling you that it's better to export uh, your translations before doing the import in order not to lose uh, anything that you have modif modified. Command copy to cloud, copy to cloud clipboard. Okay, and it is showing me the list of all the modifications that I did or that are contained in the file. You should uh, find the same list and the same message when you download something from the server. And you will have merge button. the merge, cancel button, and overwrite button, overwrite, cancel, and merge. When you select overwrite, you are replacing the modifications or any previous modification with this new file. So if in this file, something is not translated even if you have translated this thing before it will be returned back to its default state because only this the modifications included in this new file are going to take effect if you select merge you are merging the two files together so you are merging the new file with the old modifications. So if you have translated something in the new file and other thing in the old modifications, you will be having them both. But if something is translated in the new file and in the old modification, the new translation will be taking effect, not the old one. So it will be updated to the new translation. And of course, if you want to go back without importing, you tap on cancel. MSG button. Recent button. Merge button. Cancel button. Language settings. The other option is export. Export. In export, you are exporting your modifications. They will be saved in Jisho main folder in the resources folder. The other option that you will have Default. Download. is download. It will take you to translations. Here it's called translations according to my uh, modification. So translations. Enter keyword text box. I can search. Um, with 1000. Enter um, an Android blind with strings dot JSON. And I can navigate. And based on three strings dot JSON. An Android blind with strings dot JSON. And Mr. Honor's strings dot JSON. Let's uh, double tap this one. And Mr. Honor's tree. And Mr. Mr. Honor's two thou. Move down with max two. Hey, there's two thou. And now cancel button. To download it, I tap on download. And it will be 
download button added to the um, downloads folder in Gshow. Then it will ask me to import it, whether I want to, the, the same uh, dialog that I had before when I imported my own file. Cancel button. Translations. Of course, re regarding the Chinese options, they should be added to the default translations. Uh, I'm not sure when, but they should be. Um, so now you have either to do the modifications yourself or download a shared translation. Be careful and review the modifications before importing. And also, uh, if you have um, done modifications before, you, you can export them. Then if you don't like the um, new changes, you can just import your file and overwrite. So import the file that you have exported before and choose overwrite. More options button. Default. The last option is the default. It will return everything to its default state. So it will, it, it should delete all of the modifications. Attention, clicking OK will restore the default settings. Attention, click, cancel button, language settings. When you are doing modifications, it's better to familiarize yourself with the strings and how this translation works. It's not really a hard process, but you should know what you are doing. The ability to customize translations is really a great feature because, as you know, not all users are alike. So we may prefer different names. We may prefer uh, different spoken messages. Some people may prefer shorter summaries. And um, this is all achieved by editing translations by users. However, personally, I'm not in favor of giving the ability to share to the servers, to all users. I think that may create some unnecessary um, mess and some people even will not be able to know which trans translation is good and which is not and uh, which translation contains um, a certain modification and what was really modified in this translation and sometimes it will be also um, hard to um, check all the modifications especially when the list of changes is very long anyway the option to share is here you can use it and you can ignore it it's up to you so this was a look at the custom translation feature. I hope that it was clear and useful. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Karine. All good things must end. Thus, it's curtain drawing time, bringing us to the close of this week's episode. Coming up, though, we give you information on how to get hold of us. Austin, where can people get in touch with us? To contact us, you can send an email to contact us at blindandroidusers.com. You can join a mailing list by sending an email to blindandroidusers plus subscribe at groups.io you can join our telegram facebook discord and subscribe to our youtube channel the links for everything will be at the bottom of the show notes and also in the video description of the youtube channel and also the links are in the websites panel of the youtube channels that's it this week folks a busy episode for you hope you enjoyed it we'll see you next week Say bye-bye to the lovely listeners, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, lovely listeners. Bye. Bye, Goodbye. everybody. We love you guys.
thanks for listening to another episode of the Blind Android Users Podcast. Until we see you next week, don't forget to leave us your comments and suggestions via our email contact or using any of our social media sites. Have a great week.